Thank you for your interest in Kapow Software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating automating content migration into CQ5 using Kapow Catalyst. Kapow Catalyst can access and extract content and metadata from various sources, directly from database systems, from digital asset management systems, from the CMS system that content is currently in using the APIs or the web front end of that CMS, or we can extract the content directly from the website as it's presented. In Kapow's Visual Design Studio, we're going to define how that content is to be extracted, transformed, normalized, cleaned up, and then we're going to store that content along with its metadata into an intermediate database. A final set of robots will be created in the Design Studio to load the content from the intermediate database into CQ5. This is the Kapow Catalyst Design Studio. With it, we can interact visually with anything that we load into the browser window here in the middle. Across the top are steps of the robot that define exactly what we're doing with the content. The first step loads the first page of the website that we're about to crawl. The next step is a for each URL loop step. This step finds each of the URLs on the loaded page. So the purpose of this first robot that we're looking at is to create an inventory of the website that we want to migrate. So once we've created a list of all the URLs, all of the assets that make up the website, we'll have an inventory database and we'll be able to then reference that as we extract the content from the website and migrate it to the target. So the first step here, the for each URL step, this is created by interacting with the website itself. I'll demonstrate that by deleting this step from the robot, clicking on the website. Once I click on the website, I can move up the document object model structure until I'm at the top of the tag hierarchy. Here I have the entire page selected. I right click on the page and now the type of step that I create will apply to the entire page. I want to create a for each URL step. The step has been recreated here in the robot and again it functions like it did before. As I click the iteration button it moves through the website one URL at a time. Now the next step is created also by interacting with the page. I click in the blue box created by the for each URL step. I want to create an extraction step. I'm going to extract this as a URL and put it into my inventory.url variable. That's over here to the bottom right. This is where I maintain all of my variables and data structures. You can see currently the variable is empty. When I pass by this extraction step, the step will be executed and the value populated into the URL variable. Now I'm going to validate whether or not I want this URL to be part of my inventory. So the first test here, the is in domain, is going to check if this variable contains the text aopao.com. You can see here I can choose any other type of function, contains, doesn't contain, starts with, ends with, and other arithmetic functions. When I try to pass this step, I cannot pass it. The dialog box lets me know that this is not in the domain, as you can also see visually here. So what's going to happen is at runtime, the next URL will be selected from the page, and you can see here the next URL is in the domain aopao.com forward slash some content, so we're able to pass by this test here. And now the next three steps test if the current link is one of these three CMS generated buttons. You can see that the current link is not and we'll be able to pass by these exclusion rules as well. Now that we've decided that we want to include this URL as part of the inventory, we're going to get the content type of the URL. So when I pass this step, you'll see the content type populated down here below. I pass by this step, it's marked as an HTML page, now we're actually going to load that HTML page and validate that the link is working and there's no errors. Now we're going to store that URL along with the content type into the inventory database. This is the design mode of the robot where I can add steps, make modifications to the robot, and once I've done that and I'm happy with the design, I can start to debug it by going to debug mode and hit the play button. And from here we can run the robot and test it. And we can see as it runs through the site, it's collecting all of the URLs and the content type of each of the URLs. Now we've got our inventory for our website. Now we can begin to extract content from the website. The first robot that does that is the extract resources robot. The first step of that robot is going to go to that inventory database table and select all of the URLs where content type equals resource or PDF. In other words, all of the binary files, anything that's not HTML, and the first step after that is saving that file to the local hard drive along with the file size and then saving that file name and the size back into the inventory database so we're tracking where we're saving these binary assets. I'll switch from design mode to debug mode and run this robot and we can watch as all of the binary files are collected from the website. 
Once that's completed running, we'll have all of the binary assets in the intermediate hard drive and track in our intermediate database. And we can then go to our content extraction robot. We're going to load each of the URLs from the inventory, but in this case, they're going to be where content types equal HTML page. The first step loads the first HTML page from the inventory, and then we're going to get the category value from the main menu structure. So with this step, we're actually inspecting the HTML to determine which of these values is the category of selection, and we find that with the next step and save that off as our category value here. When I pass the step, it's populated. And now the next step is another loop step. This loop step is going to find all of the articles on this page and then every other page as we loop through all of the pages. So to identify an article, I'm going to click on the page, move up the DOM structure until I have outlined the first article on the first page. Now that I've outlined one article, I'll right click, select loop for each tag loop, meaning that we're going to find each of the tag structures on this page that follow the same structure. And now we're going to identify the pieces of the article. This is the title. We're going to extract this as simple text, store that into our title variable. When I pass by this step, you can see the title is populated here. And now the subtitle, same thing. And we're now we're extracting the date. To create the rule for here, you can see I'm going down to extract date. So it's recognized as a structured date. And I'm also converting this value. So here, the configuration for this extraction step, I can add any number of converters or transformation rules that I'd like. Here's the transformation rule for the date. We're changing it from its current format to the standard database date and time format. And here you can see I can select any date and time format that exists along with any country locale. So once I pass this step, we're going to see the extracted date down here below and now it's transformed to the new format as well and the extraction of the author we're also doing a transformation let's take a look at that here we're using a regular expression change the first name and the last name around and comma separate them you can see I can make changes to the regular expression and realize the result in the test area down below so I can continue to make changes add pieces to the regular expression build it out with this lookup table until I'm happy with the results hit OK and proceed if I need to, I can add additional transformation rules or converters. You can see we have anything that you would do in scripting and code in pre-made converters here. We can modify text, we can add text, remove spaces, remove special characters, number handling, arithmetic functions, date handling like we looked at, HTML handling, if we're extracting HTML, we can specify which tags to remove, format the HTML, change this all into an XML structure, change it to a JSON, CSV, any kind of encoding or decoding. Again, anything you would do in script or coding, we have pre-made converters that you can quickly drop in to the extraction step that you want to apply them to. The next step extracts the body of the article, and then the last step stores our article broken into all of its attribute pieces into the intermediate database. Here's the body of the article extracted as HTML. You can see we have all of our text formatting and links intact. So now that I've designed this robot step by step based on the first article on the first page, I'm going to go to debug mode and run the robot. What's going to happen in debug mode, it's going to identify any articles that don't fit that exact pattern. And such is the case with the 16th article on the first page. You can see our page counters at 1, our article counters at 16. We're stopped by the debugger at the extract subtitle step. So I hit the go to button from debug mode that brings me back to design mode and we can see that the 16th article does not have a subtitle. So there's various ways to handle this. Firstly, if we determine that it's not a required value, we can go to error handling for this step and simply say to ignore and continue. So anytime there's a step that is not required or a value that's not required, we can mark it as just ignore and continue if it's not there. Now if it is required, we can create a branch in the robot and say if the value is not extracted from the extraction step, then take this branch and let's populate it another way. I can create an assign value step that takes the title of the article and the first 10 characters with a regular expression and it makes that the subtitle. I can go off to a database and look up a value. I can go off to the internet, look up the value of the subtitle with the search engine. So these are some examples of ways that we could populate values that are not immediately available in the web page. 
we can also go off to the API of the current CMS system and get metadata and any other values that are not exposed by the web front end. So once I've made this change to the robot to skip past extract subtitles if one doesn't exist, we go back to debug mode and run it again. The debugger is going to identify if there's any pages or articles where we run into any issues and stop the processing and from there we can make adjustments to the robot and run it again. So this is the iterative design process that's necessary when we're extracting content from a website. And the messier the content, the more often the debugger is going to stop us and we're going to make adjustments to the robot and then run it again. Now these iterative designs in Kapow's Design Studio are very rapid. As you can see, I can identify where the issues occur, what steps they occur at, I can resolve the issue very quickly and run it again. This is one of the key advantages of using the visual environment. If I do this same process in code or scripting, dealing with these outliers and these error codes is very problematic. I have to find out where the code broke, look at a log file, determine why it broke, where it broke on the site, how to repair it. This can take potentially hours for each problem. Here you can see we can go through it in a matter of seconds in the Kapow Visual Design Studio. This is the intermediate database of content that we've created. Here you can see each of the articles all of the various attributes of each article and the URL that the articles came from. Here we have the date, the title, subtitle, author, the HTML content with all the links intact, and then we have an object key that's automatically generated by Kapow. This identifies the uniqueness of that content item. This is used for deduping of content that we're extracting from the website, and it's also used in conjunction with the extracted and last run flag to find the deltas on the website. So when we run the robots the first time, we'll have the first extracted timestamp set. And when it's extracted again, we'll have the last extracted timestamp set. That and the extracted and last run flag will be set to true. This allows us to create a content migration report that tracks all of the activities of the extractions from the website and the loads to the target CMS and it identifies the deltas on the website. So for example, if we extract all of the content from the website as it is today and then two days later after we've loaded everything into CQ, we run the robots again to identify any delta content that's changed on the site in those two days. The extracted and last run flag and the object key will identify those fields that are new content from the last two days. This allows the site to continue with no content freeze. This next robot loads the content from the intermediate database into CQ. First, we're going to go to the CQ instance, enter our username, enter our password, click sign in, and then we're going to begin to iterate through our intermediate database of articles and load each one of them into our data structure inside of Kapow one at a time. So here's the first row, and you can see when I hit the iteration button here on the loop step, we can see each of the articles that are going to be brought in from the intermediate database. There's the 7th, 8th, 9th, and so on. For each of these articles from the intermediate database, we will perform the following steps. We're going to map those values into the CQ sling form, which looks like this. This is the template that we're going to map each of these values into, the title, the subtitle, the author, the content, the article value. Once we've mapped those values in with this step here, we have a payload that looks like this. So this is our fully populated sling form that we're ready to post to CQ and get back a status of 200. The next test tag step validates that it's a 200, and then we extract the new location of this asset and store it back into our intermediate database. We'll run the robot now and watch as the content is loaded into CQ. This last robot loads the digital assets to the CQ dam. We log into CQ. Now we're iterating through our database of resource assets. As I move through this database, we can see the file name down to the bottom right changing. So for each of these file names, we'll be populating them into the form to post to the DAM. We click the Submit button, get back the 201 response, validate that it was successfully added to the DAM, and then add the new location of that asset back into the intermediate database. Go to debug mode, run the robot, and watch as all of the assets are loaded into the DAM. From our development environment, we can select our uploaded content, create a package for that content, and then import all the content as a single package to the production environment. Contact sales at kapowsoftware.com to see how we can automate your content migration.